Ah, stretching. It looks like we are live. So, uh, Richie Flo, this is about to be dope AF. I was not expecting this. Uh, this is off the cuff. So this is completely um, unscripted, unprepared. Uh, we didn't know we were going to go live. This is just, we just finished a team call, didn't we, Pete? And there were a few That's things it. mentioned there which you kind of wanted to address publicly. Yeah, things that I wanted to talk about that I think uh, that the entire community would probably benefit from listening to. So if we just wait for a few people to come in. Yeah, I'm just going to share it to my own Facebook as well. So it's, it's live on Facebook if you want to uh, go over to your, if you want to go over to the Illusions page or to my page and you can share it from there. I'm just going to share it myself so that that goes public as well. This has been shared to your timeline. And let's just wait for a few people to come in because obviously I can't see the numbers this side and you will be able to. So we'll just give everybody a couple of minutes. Richie, thank you for tuning in. Uh, let's see what questions we've got. So for anyone who's just joining us, any questions you've got, by all means, type them below. Uh, Demon Mentalism says, another wonderful project. Thank you, Demon. Uh, Demon's uh, working on some bits himself that I've been looking at on Instagram. Uh, so, I, Demon, I want you to know that I have looked at the stuff that you're sharing, and I just want you to know that we've got, got our eye on you as well. This is a fantastic way to start my day. Th thank you for tuning in. We'll just wait for a few more people to tune in, and then I'll get to what this is about. Uh, I don't know. Oh, guys, my watch is on the way. It's funny you should say that um, because you've got some things that you want to talk about. Uh, Christopher says, Peter, you blow my mind. Keep up the great work. Thank you. For, thank you, Christopher. Thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah, I want to talk about the watch for about five minutes, and then I want you guys to ask me anything you want. I'm going to invite some of you onto the call so that you can talk to me about uh, the products that you've got yourself. If you have got a watch, come on and you can talk about your watch and your experience for your watch. Uh, but I just wanted to address something that I think is really important. And it's a little bit upsetting, to be honest. And it's not regarding myself. It's regarding a guy that's on Facebook called David Kenny. And David Kenny is one of the most lovely human beings on the planet. And I'm a little bit upset with a few people in the community and the industry right now for the way they've been behaving towards this man. And if you don't know who David Kenny is, David Kenny does a review show on YouTube called Magic Orthodoxy. And it's one of those shows where he always stays right down the middle and he gives a review from both sides of the coin. He lets you know the goods and the bads of each product that comes out onto the market. And I've never sent him anything for free. Illusionists have never sent him anything for free. He purchases everything himself and therefore he's entitled to an opinion just like everybody else's. But just yesterday, he reviewed the stack watch. And after reviewing the stack watch, it seems that people took to YouTube to slam this guy, to bully and harass this guy, so much so that he had to take his own opinions down off of YouTube. And that's an absolutely unfair thing to do. And I hate to feel that somebody feels so backed into a corner that they have to remove their own voice and their own identity offline from doing something that they've done just because a few people don't like the product. Now, this is the thing. If you don't like the stat watch, that's fine. I'm not, you know, I put myself in a public position. I'm happy to be roasted. I'm happy to be criticized. I'm happy to debate people that don't like the product, tell people what I love about the product. I'll be honest about the things that I think are shortfalls in the product. You know, everybody seems to think that I'm this patsy for illusionist and that I'm going to say I love everything that they've ever produced. And I don't. That couldn't be further from the truth. There's products that I've seen, and I'm not going to name what those products are, but I turn around and I say, they're shit. They're the worst things that I've ever seen. Why you guys ever bought this, I don't know. And there's products that I look at on other magic sites and I say they're shit, and that's just because I don't like them. That's my opinion. That doesn't mean that it's a true statement of fact. What it means is that I'm not a fan of what it is. Ryan Tricks will be the first person to tell you that whenever he produces something, he puts the video in this little private group. We look at it and I go, that's good or it's crap or whatever else. And that's fine. You know, it's good to have an opinion, but have an opinion after actually seeing something and have an opinion after actually purchasing something and have an opinion 
constructively about what it is. Don't go on to David Kenny's page and because David has an opinion like yours and attack David's opinion. You're welcome to your opinion. David's welcome to his. But threatening David, harassing David and harassing his channel is just absolute nastiness and i don't think it's i don't think it's right i don't think it's just and i don't think it's fair and i wanted david to know that david i saw your review and i thought it were a great review you know this is this is the thing i did watch the review of the stack but she turned the comments off before i saw what people were saying do you know what Stu? this is the thing in the stack watch review he referenced the tamaris mnemonic book he referenced a free way to remember mnemonic if you didn't want to buy the watch he proved that he knew mnemonica. So all the comments that were made against him were irrelevant comments, and I just think that they were there to belittle him. And we're not here for that. Regardless of whether you like a product, regardless of whether you like something that I'm doing or you know whether I don't like something Ryan's doing, I will stand in Ryan's corner and I'll champion Ryan till the end of the earth. And the reason that I'll do that is because that's what we're here to do. We're here to take this community and together as a team, enable people who don't have the confidence to walk up to somebody and say pick a card to let them dip their toes in the water and get out there and get their performing feathers and get get it under their wings you know and and help them become better before better performers we're not here to humiliate people and disparage people from performing we're not here to say to somebody you're an idiot if you want to do this and you're an idiot if you want to do that you know I'm here to tell you this. I'm not saying that the stack watch is here to replace learning the Monica stack. I'm not here to say that. I'm here to say, if you want to use this as training wheels, use it as training wheels. If you already know the Monica stack and you want to use this as a parachute or a safety net, use it as a safety net. If you want to use this as the be all and end all way to remember the Monica, to open up yourself to a new world of material, or even just give you the confidence to know that if you get something wrong in performance, this is your backup and savior. That's fine as well. But do you know what, guys? For you guys that have spent the time learning the Monica, I've learned a thousand and one systems. And I've spent my time, an entire lifetime since the age of four years old, learning things that 90% of people won't learn because it's too much effort and too much time. But I don't need to learn that. And if they come up with a way to learn it faster and easier and, and allow them to be able to do the things they're doing, do you know what I do? I don't sit there and humiliate them. I pat them on the back and I say, good for you. Good for going out there, good for performing, good for entertaining, good for having the confidence to walk up to people and share with them an experience that's unlike any other experience they'll, share, they'll ever experience in their life. And it doesn't matter whether they know a stack or not. This is just an order of a deck of cards. And you know what? If you watch what I put in the downloads or the download that comes with a watch, you'll see that I talk about motivations for looking at the watch. And I challenge the people that are the naysayers one thing. Any mentalist that says to me, the watch is ridiculous because you need to create a moment in performance to look at it, close your eyes and peek a billet. If you can close your eyes and peek a billet and not create a moment in performance where you have to motivate that action, then I'll turn around and I'll say, okay, I was wrong. You look at the Swami gimmick on nail writers, you need to motivate a moment in performance to allow that moment to happen. The same with when you're palming a card and putting it into your pocket or doing card to wallet. There's a reason why you're reaching down into your pocket. When you're loading something under a glass, whether it's taking a drink in performance, you're motivating the moment. So sitting there and disparaging people that want to learn how to perform is ridiculous. And I want to share two things with those people that are out there being nasty to people who are only sharing their own opinions. And, and guys, you're welcome to say what you want. You don't like the watch. That's fine. If you don't like me, that's fine. Look, I look like I fell asleep and somebody colored me in with a coloring book. I don't give a shit what people say. I put myself in a public forum and you guys can roast me and say whatever you want. And that's fine. But don't threaten somebody who's just voicing their opinion. Disagree with it. Intellectually debate it. Go online and talk to that person in an intellectual sense. Don't let your emotions become involved. It doesn't take away from the fact that you spent years learning the moniker. It doesn't take away from the fact that you have spent your time learning a system. What it does, it makes you look like a knob. It makes you look like an asshole when you rip these people down, you know? And for Tamar Fishman, do you know what? Listen, I I left school. I was homeless at 15 years old. I was made homeless at 15 and I lived on the streets and I managed to get a job as a carpenter or a joiner in England and that's what I did. I never finished school. I never got any GCSE grades. And then I started to talk colleges and universities. 
And you know what? If it weren't for magic and mentalism, and if it wasn't for the respect that I have and the dedication that I've put into learning this art form, then I wouldn't be where I am now. None of you would be tuned in listening to this. None of you would be listening to this, right? So, you know, it's just a shame that people are bullying somebody for their opinion. You're free to have your opinion. You're free to be constructive. You're free to be nasty to me. You're free to say what you want about a product, whether you like it or not. That's your opinion. If you don't like a particular piece of music or a particular piece of artwork, that's fine. But don't threaten the artist. Don't go and attack the person that's voicing their opinion. Intellectually debate and leave your emotions at the door. And if you want to come online, I'll add you into the call. You can say what you don't like about the watch. And I'll answer my part to answer the questions that you've got. You could play devil's advocate. You know, you can say what you want to say, but just please stop attacking people that want to learn and remember a stack. There's a kid. I'm going to read a message out to you, and I'll show you. I'm not going to tell you who this is, but I'll show you the, I'll show you the message so you can see the kind of things that people are saying. So this this is a message that I received, uh, and I got this sent to me. And I'm not going to say who this is, but it says, so to be clear, let me go ahead and applaud illusionists for stating that it helps people learn this. Because I have no how I, no idea, and I have to say, you know, this person's writing, uh, is not, there's no full stop, so if I'm stuttering, it's only because of that. I have no idea how to even remember something like this. And for those that bash the idea, I don't know why you would. I have autism, and it is hard for me to remember stuff. I suffer from short-term memory loss as well. Unlike some, I died at birth for four minutes and was clinically pronounced dead, which is also another reason why I have an autism. I love you guys and have been a supporter of you for 19 years. So this is not somebody that's been a supporter for five minutes or is just championing me. It's not. This is somebody who's been a lifetime follower of illusionist before I got there. And if you, like I said, two minutes ago, I just told you, I don't think all of illusionist products are good. I stand by my own products. But that's by the by. He says, this is an amazing tool that can help me do amazing things. And to take away the fact that I remember something, then I'll buy it in a heartbeat. I've been doing magic for 19 years, and I've been very close to the E-team for that long. Illusionist, I hope you guys see this. Do you know what? That's who I put this out there for. I put this out there for the people that want to focus on their own performances. You know, what happened to the Magic Orthodoxy review? I watched it when it was uploaded. I bought the stack watch right away. It got taken down because people were attacking David Kenny, which is unfair. It was his opinion, and he stayed right in the middle. He stayed right, right in the middle. He never said anything that was nasty. Stu, you know, for a watch and a download, and we're going to go out and get performances and add material, I don't think that £42, which were the pre-order price, $52, is a ridiculous amount of money. You know, listen... Um, I learned the stack recently, but I still can't perform it. But with a stack watch, I think I can create miracles. Peter is the goat. Well, I don't know what a goat is, Daya, but I think that's, uh, I'm going to take that as a compliment. So what I'm saying to you is this. Instead of fighting and instead of arguing and instead of controversy, instead of, you know, disparaging people that don't have the confidence to walk up to somebody and perform, pat them on the back, enable them to perform, Give them the chance that you were given, you know? I think the reason people did not like it is because they put a lot of work into memorizing the stack and they feel like it discredits them. Do you know what? It doesn't. It doesn't discredit anybody. IS3. Isabella's Star 3 is a method to get a date of birth and a name. And it's a propless piece of mentalism. And it takes me about two minutes, a minute and a half to two minutes to do. And... Do you know what? If somebody says to me, I can do it in 15 seconds by having it written down on a piece of card, fair enough. That's it. It doesn't discredit any of the hard work that I've put in to achieve what I'm achieving. It, you know, it's, I'll sometimes use a billet. I'll sometimes use a calculator. I'll so, it depends how I feel in performance. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I'll be able to remember every single person's name in the comments. And other times I have so much shit going on inside my head that I struggle to remember my own family's name. And because of that, this sort of thing helps me. You know, it helps me. And, and don't discourage people, guys. Look, the world is going through this god-awful thing at this moment in time. And everybody's complaining about how businesses are collapsing and how we're not be able to go out there and perform. You know, and, and how we're not able to make money and how people are stopping being able to perform, all sorts of other stuff. 
And what you're doing is in the comments, you're attacking people. In your comments and your commentary, you're attacking people for wanting to learn and better themselves so that when all this is over, they can get out there and do it. I'm going to go through the comments and I'm going to read some of them. And I'm going to answer your questions because this is about everything. And I don't want it to be going on about the stack watch. But all I want to say is, look, for those people that have been attacking David, have been sending threatening messages, have been sending nasty messages, you know, I'm autistic and have memory problems. So when my watch arrives, this is great. I'm going to feel like a superhero. There you go, guys. You know, this is this is, this is, is it. Don't attack people. Say what you've got to say. You know, somebody in the comments just said, I don't like the product. And that's fine. That's great. You know, I don't like Cliff Richard and I don't like Busted, but it didn't stop them having number one hits. Do you know, I, that, that's it. And so this is about dope. Hey, hey, hi, guys. I'm just going to go down and read some of these. Any word on back on how, how loose the bezel should be? Bill Davis Magic, if you contact Geraint Clark or if you contact support at illusionist.com, them guys will be able to tell you all that information. I have this one. Um, I don't know whether yours is looser than anybody else because I don't have it in front of me to, to compare. But, you know, it's it rolls nicely. It doesn't slip when I'm moving, so maybe that's a, a good reference. Before the sun, there are so many methods to so many tricks. Just right, Dylan, there is. There's 101 methods, and no one is better than the other. It's the end goal that's important, and the end goal is this, to entertain an audience. And if it does that and you do that, then how you get there, the journey doesn't matter. I've been putting off learning the moniker for a while, and this tool is a great way for me to start working with the stack and learning it at the same time. Thank you, Pete, and thank you, Corey. Thank you. You know, this idea, and I'll tell you something, this idea, I had this idea back maybe three years ago, and I could never get it to come off the ground. I couldn't find the right people to make it happen. I couldn't find the right people to produce it. And then working with E, you know, working with E, they managed to allow me to do this. And and I'll be honest, and E probably won't want me saying this, and I don't care. I do everything my own way. If they'd have said to me that the watch were being produced in a different color, a different style, I'd have said it's not being produced. It's me. If you want to attack me, attack me. Don't attack Illusionist for bringing this out. I believe in this product, and this is something that I will use, have used, and I've got great ideas that uh, when we get into doing the proper full-on explanations and downloads, you'll see. So, you know, all I can say is this. Wait until you see the product before you judge it. That's all I'm asking. If I took a look at a photograph of you and said, oh, I can tell by your photograph you're a shit mentalist, and you couldn't hit if you stuck a shotgun up someone's ass and pulled the trigger, that wouldn't be a fair comment to make based on a picture. And what you've got is you have the picture of the watch, you have commentary from other people, but without having it in front of you, you know, without having it in front of you, I don't feel it's fair to make a criticism on. So you could say you don't like it, and that's fine, or you don't like the look of it, and that's fine. But to talk about my methods and to talk about my performance when you've never seen my performance or how I justify or motivate that in performance, I think you can't do that. I don't think that that's fair. How do you make a living being a mentalist or used to if that's the case? Do you know what? I'll tell you something. Um, oh, thank you, dude. This cardigan's so warm and lush. Making a living as a mentalist is not easy. It's not easy at all. And I've been through a series of different jobs. And a lot of people, you know, don't. Dwayne Williams can have a signed pair of underpants. You've got a pair from Blackpool, you twat. Dwayne stole a pair of my boxer shorts in Blackpool and put them into his case and tried to pretend like it were an accident. And another reason he wanted to take them back is just so that him and his girlfriend could take it in terms. I'm not going to continue with that sentence, but that's that. Anyway, so I had a lot of jobs. So I worked as a joiner. And I unfortunately, as I talked about in the, the blog, I lost that job because I, there were a guy in there that were bullying me. And if you want to know the full story that didn't make it into the blog that I wrote uh, for Illusionist a, a while back. So I was there for a while. And anyway, this guy kept coming in and, and he were a bit of a bully. So, and the thing is with me is I, I don't like being bullied and I don't like bullies if this isn't apparent via this video. And so this guy pushed me around and pushed me around and he did all the things that people do to apprentices, but he took it to the next level. Like he'd hit me with bits of wood and he'd like, he'd take a standing knife blade and he'd slit the back of like back of my tops and like he'd take pins and stick them into the back of me and stuff, just stuff that you just don't do to other people. Anyway, I, I've always been a bit of a fighter. Since I were a kid, I've always been one of these people that I'll take stuff and I'll be pushed and I'll be pushed and I'll be pushed and I'll be pushed. And then when I'm backed into a corner, fighting should never be the answer. But when I've been backed into a corner, you know, I'm not I'm not one of these people that's going to lay down and just take it lying down. Anyway, so the gaffer said to me, the boss, he said to me, do something back, say something back to him. So one day I were fitting some laminate flooring. So these like thin bits of wood that go on the floor. 
one day were really, really harassing me and he'd done some, he like spit in my food and like he did some nasty stuff with my cup of tea. So I took a piece of laminate flooring and I held it sideways and I wrapped it around his head and he fell on the floor. And then I took a standing knife and put it on the floor. And I said, if you bully me again, I'll slit your fucking throat with a standing knife. And um, I were only young. I wouldn't ever talk like that now. But anyway, every all the, all the other joiners, were, hey, Terry's being put on his ass by the young lad, you know. And then this guy waited till we were doing a contract job. And he went outside and he put his hands all, all over his car tires. So he had black soot all over his hands. And he walked into a customer's house and he put his hands all over the cream leather sofas. And then he rang the boss and said, the young apprentice has just been into the room and he's put his hands all over the sofas and you need to get rid of him. And that's why I lost my job at that company. And then I ran into John years and years later. We became business partners in certain sense. and We've been good friends ever since. And that's that. So then I worked in a factory, packing shoes into boxes. I worked as a picker and a packer. Um, I worked as a salesman for en an energy company, knocking on people's doors and telesales. I worked in a tattoo studio as a tattoo artist. I've had a range of different jobs. And my problem is that I don't like doing things the way that everybody else wants me to do. And there's sometimes the logicalities in the things that I see. So I, I feel that I need to breathe and be creative to be me. And that's why if you watch watch me on instagram i fix i build cars you know i build cars or i draw you can see my drawings in the background over here i make drawings and i like designing things i love spray painting i like taking things apart and rebuilding them and i get fascinated with stuff outside of magic and mentalism and then i bring all that into my mentalism to help inspire me so the honest answer is this if you want to make money doing mentalism you need to break your back and I did two years of Skyping people for three, all hours of every day. I lost relationships. I've lost friends. I've lost social contacts just because of the amount that I travel. I've been in and out of hospital because of my dedication to this art form and working without sleeping for hours and hours and hours. And so you just got to break your back and it'll happen for you if it's meant to happen. Do you think it's important? Have your books on so mentalism? I really love it. I think it's some pressing material. Is there any chance you can make a video series complementing it? Do you know what? I, I were in talks with uh, Illusionist before I ever got the position at Illusion, Illusionist to take those series and make it into a video series. And you wouldn't believe uh, these guys get a lot of sticks. So because Illusionist seems like this big faceless corporation, this big magic company that everybody revels in roasting online. And by the way, you know, if you want to roast me on roast pages, that's great. Roast me. There's a roast page, page on Instagram right now that seem to believe that they've intellectually beat me because I left. No, you can't educate pork. So I don't debate with people that I feel are just not going to debate reasonably and fair and intellectually. Anyway, that page, I know who's running it. And their reasons for roasting us on that page is nothing short of political. It's actually another magic company, but a smaller one, that are trying to disparage buyers from buying things from illusionists to push them towards their own sales page. And I think that that's disgusting as well. You know, we never disparage your products. I don't disparage your products. Look at earlier on, I said there were a certain number of illusionist products I didn't like. I never named them. I don't need to name them because I'm not here to take food off of somebody else's table. But anyway, uh, so maybe at some point in the future. Do you think it's important for mentalism to have memorable images like magic? People seem to remember what they see. I think if you can make anything visual and you can represent something visually, of course, 100%, I think you should always do that because people remember what they see and they sparsely remember what they hear. Is the stack watch going to be a limited run after this next batch? Pony's bike, you know, to be honest with you, I couldn't believe that we sold out in pre-order, to be honest with you. You know, I never in a million years envisioned the fact that we'd sell out in pre-order. And I really don't know what happens in terms of the sales. I don't deal with that stuff. And just another thing for you guys that are out there shitting all over the product, I get paid a retainer by Illusionist. I don't get paid. I didn't have to release the stack watch. And anybody who says I'm doing it for a quick cash grab or Illusionist are doing it for a quick cash grab, it's absolute bullshit. And the reason it's bullshit is I didn't make a penny from this product. I get paid a retainer for being part of the company. I'm a, in fact, in, in fact, I'm not an Illusionist client. They're a client of mine. You know, they're a client of mine. I have my own company and we work alongside each other and I'm paid a retainer to be part of that company. 
And so anybody that says that this is a cash grab or I'm making money out of it, I'm not. I produce this because they give me the ability to reach my dreams and achieve my dreams. And I, like I say, anybody that says I was selling out, I wasn't, I was buying in. I was buying into a company that are so great at being able to source the right people to take what I've got inside here and make it a reality for you guys, then that's that's what they do, you know? And that's that's what I've done. It's not it's me selling out and I'm not making money off the product. Um, so yeah, you know, I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's going to be a limited run or not. Can you make a documentary of your story? I feel it's a very beautiful story. Do you know what? If I made a documentary about my life, half the things people wouldn't believe. If you want a story about something you wouldn't believe, let me tell you how I learned to drive. And if my brother's watching this, he'll be able to jump in on the commentary uh, as well. So I left school. I'm working as a joiner at this point, as I mentioned earlier on. And I was working only three or four days a week because obviously they couldn't take a minor on. I were under the age of 16 and I were working a full-time job or it was supposed to be a full-time job as an apprentice. So I got, say, two or three days off a week because they couldn't legally allow me to work for the company. And so I used to go over to a guy called Rick Sykes' house and I used to build minis. And maybe that's where my love for building cars has come from. Now, I tinkered with cars. I'd reverse backwards and forwards in, in the drive. I'd ridden motorbikes since I was a young child. And he said to me, do you want to come down to Portsmouth, which is about 600 miles from my house, right, and look at a car? So I said, yeah, of course I want to go. So I, I got hold of my brother and I said, do you want to take a day off school? And I know this is not right. I encouraged my brother to take a day off school. So he jumped into his car, this little silver Corsa, and we drove 600 miles down to look at this uh, Subaru Impreza. And we take a look at this Subaru Impreza and he says, I really want it. I wonder if my dad will loan me the money to get it. And a few messages later to his dad, his dad offered to lend him the money. Now, of course, I'd never been in a position like that. I couldn't believe that anybody had lend people that amount of money, but they did. And he said to me, oh, have you ever driven a car? And I said, oh, I've messed about a little bit, you know, on a driveway. He said, if I give you a 15-minute lesson in an industrial estate, do you think you'd be able to drive the car back, the Corsa back for me, the car that we'd gone down in? I said, I don't know. I'll give it a go. So we went into this industrial estate. I had 15 minutes of driving around. And then I drove the car 600 miles back over motorways, having never driven on a motorway before, round roundabouts in London, through city centres, all the way back home without ever getting stopped, without ever getting done. And it was one of the most incredible, uh, I were a kid, I were a silly kid, and I won't recommend that anybody goes out and does that. But if I told you stuff, you know, I have so many stories and things that are weird from the way that I learned to drive to the pets I had. My dad was a falconer and he flew birds of prey, eagles and owls and kestrels. And my granddad was a horse whisperer. And so we're from a stock of farmers. And if I told you some of the stories of, you know, running around fields with horses and taming horses and flying birds of prey and riding motorbikes at three years old and, and being part of a race community with my granddad being the very first person to own a, a motorbike in York. Just loads of crazy stories that I could tell and I never get a chance to. So maybe a series on YouTube would be good. Maybe look at that in the future. Let's have a look. Love, love, love the watch. The Cyforce that you taught on the project Imagination. Demon, can you tell me which Cyforce it is? Because if you talk me through the Cyforce, I can talk to you about what it is that you're doing wrong. Any Cyforce I've ever shared about anything um, works because just look at the comments in the YouTube videos, you know. If you have a look in the comments in the YouTube videos that I put out when I'm doing a Cyforce at the start one, and I actually filmed one today, people tend to say that it's worked. So, um, have you ever legitimately, uh, legitimately, I can't even pronounce that, I have five sisters. You've killed me off verbally. Have you ever legitimately scared someone while performing? Um, there's two kinds of being scared. So there's the type of being scared where they feel threatened and scared and no, because of my personality. I'm not like that. Um, people sort of, without sounding like I'm being egotistical, because I am who I am, I'm a warming person. I'd always invite anybody into my personal space. You're free to say what you want. No opinion you could ever have would be too far out there for me, whether it's a conspiracy or something against my own beliefs. So in that sense, no. Um, I've been in situations where people are freaked out by what it is that I can do, and they don't want to sit next to me because they feel that I'm going to know something they don't want me to know. So in that respect, yes, I scared people but then when i tell them it's something that i don't do all the time it's something that i can turn off and on and i want to know people socially not cerebrally they tend to sort of you know get get back my favorite magic apps do you know i don't really use many magic apps to be honest with you i'm not a massive massive fan of magic apps i played with predictogram i have a really interesting use for that 
I'm planning something fairly big with that, so I quite like that. Um, I couldn't tell you about the technicalities of the app because when it comes to tech, I'm redundant. I've always preferred to use my own mental acumen. But like I say, these apps are designed the same way as the watch. They're there to, as a, a learning tool or an aid for you to find easier ways in performance. So, you know, all of them, if they enable that. I've tried learning stacks before and a combination of letters and numbers is really hard for me. This watch is going to make the stack work possible. You know, you can see by the comments that, that this is really helping people be able to produce and perform miracles they couldn't perform before. Top tips and most recommended effects for people just getting into mentalism. AAA book test by Mark Paul is brilliant. Um, of course, that's something for somebody who's done a little bit of mentalism. If you want to find things to do in mentalism, Reaper, my honest advice to you is this, and I'll give you an effect here. If you know the ambitious card, for example, if you take the ambitious card and have somebody write down a thought and then say, look, it's going in the middle, and of course we know it's not because you know the ambitious card, you know where it is. You can look at that and you can frame it as mentalism. So take the tricks and effects that you already know and just give them that mental spin. And what will happen is it'll be a self-perpetuating motion where you end up being in the midst of a mentalism performance without ever knowing that you have. What is your favorite piece of magic to performing a daily basis that is not mentalism? Um, to be honest, we I don't perform much magic Um I don't know if out of this world counts as magic. I have a really interesting version of that. But the best piece of magic that you can give somebody is asking them about them and asking them about their day and talking to them and finding out about their life because you never quite know how their story is going to inspire your magic and mentalism. And just having somebody to, to listen to them sometimes. People love being able to get things off the chest to people that they don't know. So the greatest piece of magic that you can perform is just being yourself. Can we see a close-up of the the watch on my wrist, of course you can. The time's different on it because I were working on an effect today, but as you can see, it's just, just like normal, you just twist it and set it to the right time. I'm working on something, in fact, uh, today that I were talking to Lloyd Barnes about a few months ago. So yeah, um, let's keep going down. Regarding the stack watch, what about the cards or numbers forcing for a nice ear can? Is there any other tool to make this easy forcing yes there is um and i was just talking to a guy called rocco cult today and I, back on my devil in disguise 2 project i talked about a way to force a number in any card any number and the guy had the same idea as me and he's a very 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 smart guy and we were jamming backwards and forwards this morning and that's a really great way to that's a really great way to force a number pete you have a beautiful story thoughts on time can you share you know, Zach, uh, so Zach was the person who appeared in the Predictogram trailer, uh, and Zach's an interesting character. He's a really, really good guy. Um, I will share my thoughts on uh, time, but not now. And the reason I will is because I'm planning on doing a live where I want to share an insight into a few different stories and metaphors and things that I think you guys will really love. And recently I've been doing a YouTube series a uh, new YouTube series where I talk about my old performances. I'm hopefully in talks with moving that onto the Illusionist platform. So you get to see me looking back at my old performances, tearing them apart, telling you what I liked about them, sharing with you what I hated about them so you can learn from my mistakes. Um, if you want to follow my story, if you see it's at Peter, uh, sorry, underscore Peter underscore Turner, that's my Instagram. If you don't have me on Instagram, go and add me on Instagram. Did you have any tattoos you regret getting? Do you know, it's a really interesting question is that because the thing is with tattoos that what happens is that you regret having space after a while. So it starts by, I mean, if you see my, my entire body is covered all the way down, all, all my back, my body's covered and I have a bit of space here and that bugs me. So I regret having space. This entire arm, I don't know if you can see this, is completely black. So it's just a black arm. And what I did is I tattooed over that myself. I totally tattooed over the arm because of the things I didn't like. So, um, Elmer, you can ask me a question about anything you want. Doesn't mean I have to answer it. Um, hey, Peter, working on IS3, any tips for spectators that refuse to give you any signs and tips? Johnny, um, yes, you can simply have them write it down, use your calculator, go back to one of your older methods. I love to invite somebody on here. That The problem is with this, and this is where we're in this really difficult situation, because I'd invite somebody onto the show, and I'd perform Isabella's Star 3 so that you guys could see what it looks like. But the first thing that everybody says is that 
or that you've got them on Facebook, you could see their Facebook. So it's a pointless endeavor. Um, but, you know, if you want to see that in the future, I'm willing to go out and I'm willing to shoot some footage to try to show you as much as I can on that, on that situation. John Matthew Shaw, what is this stemming from? Uh, excluding the pun, I'm not sure. I don't know. I just, my, my aim in, in this is just the same as everybody else's. It's just to help take everybody up to the next level of performance. And I'm not making a penny from it. So regardless of what the haters say, they could say what they want, you know. If you don't like it, simple, don't use it. That's true. Never a truer word was said. This reminds me of the Madison incident with Erdenes. It does. And you know what? I'll tell you something. And this is this is it. Uri Geller said that the best type of promotion is controversy. And whilst I agree with that to a degree, I don't want to be somebody who's controversial. I'm not here for that. I'm not here to, you know, look, when I first came into this community, there were things that I did that nobody else were doing. I'm not saying that I'm an envelope pusher, but people have come round to that way of thinking. And when I first came, it was everybody against me. Everybody were against me and everybody was saying negative things about me. Everybody were attacking me. Everybody was saying things that make most people want to quit. But I used it as ammunition to keep moving forwards. And that's what you've got to do. And the Madison and Erdenes incident, I mean, I can't talk about it from the perspective of illusionists because I don't know what their feelings and thoughts were. And everybody seems to think that there's this big secret train that's running in the background that plans the way to market things. It's not. We're a small team and it's all intuition-based and they run with how they feel that they should market something. And that's fine. I don't deal with a marketing illusionist. I don't care how they market something. That's up to them. I'm just here, like I say, with one goal in mind and that's to bring us all together so that we can get out there and we can just show people that magic can be good and mentalism can be good. Um, but the old magic, the old Madison and Erdenes thing, Dan's always been a controversial character. Madison is really great at what he does. I've sat with Dan and I've seen him do things that blow my mind. You know, I can't do the things that he does with cards. I don't want to do the things that he does with cards. He spent a lifetime learning that stuff. Um, if it works for him, if he planned on that being something that were going to happen, then so be it. I don't know. I can't comment because I wasn't there at the time. But I hope it's not, and I hope people are not seeing it as being that controversial because, you know what, that's not me. I'm not here to say that I'm better than Juan Tamariz. I'm not here to say that I'm better than anybody that's learned to stack hell. I'm not better than anybody. I'm one of you. I'm one of the people. What made me join Illusionist? Um, I was with Illusionist in uh, America, in Vegas, and so the honesty is that I tried to work with Illusionist on a number of occasions over the years, and I was getting nowhere with it. And the reason I was getting nowhere is because Illusionist is a, such a close knit little family; they're so busy all the time, and I didn't realise that from the outside. And I wanted to work with them for so long, and I just kept going round and round in circles. And then I got to sit with them in Vegas, and I said, "Look, are we going to make this happen or not? Are we going to work together or not? Tell me now, because I'll stop bothering trying." And they were like, well, let's give it a trial run. And then I got to know the guys on a more personal level. I mean, I've known G for a, a long time and I've known Lloyd for a long time outside of it. And we have a laugh as friends outside of business. Um, and it just felt like home. And that's a ridiculous thing to say. But I, I ran the 13 Souls, a company called the 13 Souls, and it hospitalized me. And I was waking up in the morning, dealing with every single email then dealing with going out and filming products, then hiring people to film stuff. I had a guy called Casper working with me and we, we were working on stuff. And then we'd have to come back and I filmed Bigger Fish 2, which I had to fly somebody in from America to help film. Three of us were editing. We were doing like hours and hours and hours of filming a day, then coming home and doing hours and hours of editing. And I dropped so much weight because I wasn't eating. I wasn't sleeping. I was obsessing over things. I was stressing out. I was having to deal with customer complaints, posting things out, editing material, creating material, consulting, filming, and it were killing me. And so for my health, they opened up an opportunity for me to be part of an incredible team that listened to what it is that I had to say, that didn't disparage me for wanting to do things the way that I wanted to do them. And they say to me all the time, Brad says to me all the time, you're a loose cannon. You know, during the stack watch live, watch it back, I was smashing the stack watch off the table. That's because it's me and I wanted to see myself if it were that robust. I didn't care what Brad said or what anybody else said. I wanted to see for myself. I were curious. I'm a curious cat. And so they allow me to be me. And, um, you know, they, they allow me to do what I want to do and just just have the silly thoughts that I have and, and everything else. Colin, yes, I uh, I did. 
I, I Skype with people regularly. I'm always performing. And do you know what? I performed for two years over Skype. And, and that's where I grounded myself in performances like this to be able to get a hit out of something, you know, whilst not really struggling. Let's have a look. Ah, somebody says, Dea meant greatest of all time. Can you name some mental effects that play well virtually? Um, any effect that, you know, if, if you want to do mental effects, do anything that requires not having to take things off the screen. You can still do a lot of the things that you do, just don't take them off the screen. You know, you can still do the thing where you get them to think of a card whilst you riffle them and you can tell them where it is. You can do things with credit cards because... There's a, well, not to go into too much method, there's things with credit cards that you can do. There's psychological forces that you can do. You can do hypnosis via the screen. And, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do. The thing is that you've just got to think about keeping it in this box. So let's say that you're going to do angle Z, which is not a mental effect, but it's a card trick. The problem is that when you make the card disappear, don't reach off to the side to now bring the card, the corner of the card back. Keep everything in this box and imagine that you're performing through a screen and you can do anything. You know, you can do absolutely anything. Project with Lloyd Barnes. Do you know, trying to tie Lloyd down to even get a conversation on Skype with him is impossible. If anybody's ever tried to message him on Messenger, you probably know that that's the case. How do you answer the question, why are you so good about hurting anybody's feelings? Do you know, the, the honest answer to that, DC, is that um, never... I consider myself okay uh, and I never go as far as saying I'm great or I'm the best or I'm this or I'm that. And the reason is because whilst you lot, are, not you lot, I mean, people that are commenting and saying nasty things, whilst you lot are critiquing me, I'm critiquing myself. You know, I don't mind going back over my old performances and even interviews like this and looking at it and going, I wish I'd have said that differently. I wish I'd have done that differently. I make mistakes every single day of my life. I'm a human being. You know, and, and that's it. So it just comes down to taking your time and just be humble. And that should shine through. And if that doesn't shine through and people still want to attack you, well, that's fine as well. Just as long as they're not threatening people. I don't look like cups and balls, but I'd never attack anyone for buying it or performing it. Great point. Big Cake talked about this and he's saying the same thing as Peter. Let's have a look at this. I'm just going through to answer some of your questions. What's your favorite effect to perform from freeform mentalism and jinxed? I really love the life equation uh, of, of jinxed. And the reason I love the life equation is because that's a mental effect that can be performed right over the airwaves. And if anybody wants to see a performance of that, jump in and I'll perform it for you. All you need is your mobile phone and I'll show you exactly what it looks like and how one of these mental performances goes. I don't mind performing that for you guys. My favorite effect from... Uh, freeform mentalism was probably the any card at any number. And the reason that I like that is because the method is so long-winded and so ridiculous and so out there that nobody else on the planet would be asked doing it apart from me. The most important thing is you are unique, not a copycat. Continue with a great job. Thank you, Augustine. How difficult is IS3 to learn? Um, when you break it down and you put it into smaller, you cut it into smaller sections and learn it a few times, you know, it's it's not so bad. Smashed it over Zoom on the lockdown magic event at the start of lockdown for us. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Dean. So there's an event that I just did. I forgot about oh, this is going back a little bit. But yeah, Dean's a great, great guy. And I did the life equation on that. Would you perform your legendary ACAN sometime? Uh, again, I'm happy if anybody wants to jump on and they want to uh, they want to see me jamming a little bit and they want to get a deck of cards out. And I'm happy to, to mess about and I'm happy to jam with you and show you a few things. I'm all about performance you know if you want to do that and i know that g's moderating in the background somewhere if somebody says that they want to come online and they want to they want to jam i'm happy for that to happen tyler smith how would one join this call uh message g tyler we can invite you if you want to join the call you're more than welcome to and i'm more than happy to perform for you if you want to see a few bits Yes, do the ACAN. I'll show you a version of ACAN. I'll show you a very nice one. It's very difficult over this distance with the delay on Skype and stuff like that. And it might completely fail, but I'm not bothered because that's what life's about. Um, watching your son do a side force is freaking awesome. My son, Zachary, I taught him uh, I taught him a few effects. He does a really interesting version of uh, Prequivocate. And if you want to see Prequivocate, that's another thing that I can show you. I can run and get a deck of cards and I can, 
I can show you that. If somebody wants to jump on, feel free to to jump on. Um, and G will sort that out. Have you ever messed up a trick? Yes. I've messed up lots of tricks. Hundreds, thousands. I've got thousands of hours of messing up tricks under my belt. And what you do is you just smile and move on. You know, but you know the, the the fact of the matter is, this is really simple. When you fail an effect, your audience should never really know that you failed the effect. That should be the important thing. They never really know where it's going. So that's that's you know that's that. Um, Richie Flo, someone says, jump on. Any thoughts about mentalism? I saw Pete jamming at the session last year in the bar. It was brilliant. Thank you, Ken. CJG, can I join? Join the call via this link with your real name. There you go, Streamyard. Come and jump on. Uh, favorite apps. I answered that earlier on. I'll go get a deck of cards. If you want to jump on the call, you're more than welcome to jump on, and I'll try to show you a couple of things. I'm happy to do that. I didn't know it were going to come, but uh, you've got an invite link. Give me one second. I'm going to run out whilst they invite people in. So give me a second. Hey, we're back. So let's play a game. I'm. Oh, hey, man, how are you? Hi, Pete. How are you doing? Not too bad. Thank you for joining joining the uh, the the call. Uh, firstly, there's a couple of things that are important because I think that people are going to probably think that in some way, shape, or form, beforehand, I asked you to join the call or you knew you were going to join the call. Could you swear on your family's life that you didn't know you'd be asking to join this call, and until about a minute ago, you didn't even know you'd be coming on yourself? I swear, this is totally not set up in any way. <clears throat> So, do you have your mobile phone there? I do. So what I want you to do is open it to your calculator and we'll play a game. So when you create a PIN code, the way you create a PIN code is one of two ways. The first way is that you go to the bank and you think of the most random number you can think of and you punch it in and you change your PIN code to that. The second way is to take meaningful events from your own life add them together to create almost a pin soup and then just remember that number. And I think that's the more interesting one because it's the more impossible of the two. So what I want you to do for me is this, Tyler. I want you four digits punching your date of birth into your phone, but don't let me see it. Four digits like the... Yeah, so I, I was born in 1987. So if you were born in 1987, you'd pick 1987. So whatever year you were born. Now, I, I, the people that are watching this, the thing that's important to remember is that based on probability, there'll probably be maybe one or two other people with that same date of birth, but I could probably look at you and I could ascertain roughly how old you are, and therefore I'd probably be able to guess what the code is, and I don't think it's fair enough. So let's take this a step further. Can you think of a year from your life that was important to you that I wouldn't know? Yeah. So press the plus key and type that in in four digits. So, for example, if it was 2010, it'd be 2010. Okay. Press the plus key once more. Type your age in. Now, bear in mind, I'm a different age to you, and if I were doing this, it'd be completely different. Tell me when you've done that. Okay. The last thing what I want you to do is press the plus key for me. Can you think of how many years it's been since that special year that you just typed in a moment ago? Yes. Type that amount in. Add it to whatever you've got there. So what you arrive at is a total that's meaningful to you and only you. It doesn't mean anything to me. Bear in mind, my special year was 2010, which were 10 years ago. So even if we were coincidentally the same age and I press plus 10, the total would be completely different to yours, right? Yes. So have a look at your total and think of any number inside there and just stare at me for a few seconds. Are you thinking of a three, Tyler? I am. There you go. You see, I can do this. And uh, you didn't know that you'd be doing this, right? Nope. Just focus on that last digit for me and just keep saying the last digit over and over again, like nine, 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 over and over again. Uh, I'll tell you what, Keep hold, don't show me. Hold the phone up so everybody can see because you're about to turn this round. I think from reading you, the pin code that you just created, bear in mind, if you had created this pin code and I wanted to steal everything from your bank, it should be four zero three nine and if i'm correct show everybody the total and that is how you guess a pin code that somebody's just created off the top of the head and that's my favorite routine from jinxed Amazing. Uh, yeah it's a cool routine right let's play a game with you and everybody else at home so i'm going to hold up a playing card and i'm going to try to transmit 
the identity. Hey, dude, how's it going? Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, are you? I'm gonna try to transmit the identity of this playing card into your head at home. So if you're in the comments and you're watching this, don't please, if you can see the marking, don't peek at the marking. I'll hold it right back over here so you can. In fact, I'll hold it like this, right? Um, I'm gonna try to transmit it into your head, and I want everybody else in the comments as well to try this. So if you want to do this, you have to listen really carefully. I want you all to think of the value of a playing card, ignore the suit. So don't say anything, just all think of the value of a playing card, ignore the suit. Now the likelihood is that you are probably miles out. And the reason that you're going to be miles out is because you don't know what this is and it's just a guess. Yeah, so it's like yeah, hard. It's good. If you're thinking of uh, a number card, I want you to change to a picture card. And if you first thought of a picture, change to a number, just so you're somewhere brand new. So you all have a value inside your head. Just to make this more random, if you're now thinking of a number, change to any other number you want. And if you're on a male court card, change to a female. Anywhere else, just stick. Now we've got one last job to do, the suit. I want you to think of the suit that you feel best fits this card. So, for example, the ace, we know the spade is fit the best. This is not a spade. Tell me when you've all got a playing card inside your head. I got one. Yes. If you're out by just the suit, we'll count this as a hit. In the comments, let me know how you did. I was thinking of the Queen of Hearts. That was it. Yep. Yep. That's the end. How cool is that? Let's play a game. Has anybody got a deck of cards there? I got one. So what I want you to do for me uh, is we'll start with we'll start with one person. Magic Orthodoxy, can you join the screen? More than welcome to join this stream. Um, I'm going to tell you this. I don't know if this is going to work. I'm just going to. There we go. You know. So you've just seen two effects that you know they they might want to set my turn. I'm going to try something now that's a little bit more difficult. Um, for this, G, I want you to randomly pick one of the people and just maximise their video so we can just see them. I'm just waiting. There we go. Hey. So, could you pan the, could you pan the camera down for me, Jordan, so that, that we can see you dealing the cards? Is that a possibility? That's perfect. What I want you to do for me, Jordan, is I want you Did to you? shuffle. Yeah, just mix riffle shuffle that deck of cards, mix it up to your heart's content. Now, there's something that's a fact. It said there's over a quintillion different ways in which a deck can end up in, in terms of order after it's been shuffled. And to liken that to anything, if you took every single planet in the cosmos, put life forms on those planets, assuming there's not already. Gave them a deck of cards. The likelihood is a deck's never been in that order before and never will be again. Jordan, sure. would you believe me if I told you that the 23rd card in that deck were the Six of Clubs? That would be fucking unreal. It'd be amazing, right? So I'll tell you what, just square them up a second and just deal them face up one at a time onto the table because I just want to prove this. Face, yeah, face up, yeah. I want to prove this what? is not... Do you, want me, do, you want me to, do you want me to count or...? Yeah, yeah, count to 23 so. face one, two, this is not just three, four, there it is. Stop, stop, stop. Go back. Stop, 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 stop. We've frozen. Just go back. What position we're at? Number two. So that proves yeah. that this, yeah, this proves it's not just luck. What I'm about to show you is not yep. just luck. Yep. Look, let's, let's just see if the six of spades is there. So we're at five. So keep dealing face up. Six. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24. You see, it's not. Stop there. It's not. It's not, right? But that, that yep. there's one thing that's proof there. The proof is that when I'm doing this, it's not just going to be a lucky hit. It's not just going to be, you know, sure. some weird coincidence. Take them cards and put them back on the top of the deck. A second ago, so just pan the camera up a second. A second ago, you thought of a playing card, right? And it doesn't matter if it wasn't the Queen of Hearts. If you were remotely close, that's fine as well. But let's say that I rolled a dice on the table and it said okay. the number one on it. So add one to whatever card you thought of a minute ago. So, for example, okay. if it was a 10, you'd now be on a jack. If it was a two, you'd now be on a three. Does that sort of make sense? So just add one to the value. Yeah, yeah just go up by one. Yep. So just just so and again, this is just so that I know where we're at. What card are you thinking of? You can tell me. The eight of clubs. 
the the eight of clubs. Now inside that deck, you don't know where the eight of clubs is, right? And the camera keeps freezing, so it, it might be a little bit difficult. This I'm hoping that it's going to stay seamless. Um, if I asked you to name a picture card, what picture card would you name? Um, Do you have a favorite Jack of diamonds? For mine's mine's the Jack of Hearts. Do you have a favorite picture card? I think this is going to be terrible because the stream is starting to freeze mine's really drastically. Yeah. Is it freezing mine's for instance, the Jack of Diamonds. Jack of Diamonds. And again, do you know where the Jack of Diamonds is in the deck? Yeah. No idea. And, and so I could name a hundred different cards and you'd never know where it is, right? Right. I'm going to teach you how to do this. I'm going to take one playing card out and you're going to find it using intuition. I've taken one playing card out. I'm going to tell, uh, can you just jump back to me a second, G? I'm going to show everybody what card this is before we begin. Jordan, please don't move the order of the deck. You can see the card. Oh. You're going to intuitively find this. So put it back to Jordan a second. Jordan, I want mm -hmm. you face down, face down, deal, pan back down again so we can see. Deal the cards face down one at a time onto the table. You can stop whenever you want. There, put that card back on the top of the deck a second. I'm going to give you a choice. Put the deck down for a second. So you have two packets of cards there, right? Yep. Do you want to grab that packet in front of you and just cut some cards onto the top of the bigger pile? Grab this one. Uh, the, the smaller packet. And do you want to cut some onto the top of the bigger packet? Make it yeah, okay. possible. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. So put it on there, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And we're freezing up again, so this is going to be horrific. Uh, did you just cut the cards onto the top? I did. Do you want to do you want to deal a card or two off the top of the big packet? It's up to you. You don't have to. I'm good. I'm good. Do you want to do, do, you want to do one for luck? Make it random. Yeah, impossible. yeah, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Want to hit, so back yeah, yeah. Please make it random. Drop it down. Yeah. yeah do you yeah. want to do you want to cut some of that big packet onto the smaller packet? Do what you want. It's up to you. This is your life. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So if at the last second, so don't move the cards from there. Just pan back to me a second. So you can see this card. Please don't move the cards. The idea is this. The King of Diamonds. We're going to see if this works. And if it doesn't, I'm hoping, I mean, the stream's really bad, but we're going to do something more impossible in a minute. And I think this yeah, is going to work. Yeah. Jordan, it's going to come back to you. You're going to get given five seconds. You can cut the cards if you want. You don't have to. It's completely up to you. Whatever decision you make, we'll run with. And everybody has to say at this point that it's totally fair because I didn't know you'd cut some back. I was hoping, in fact, you wasn't going to. I was hoping you weren't going to deal some more. Mm -hmm. Kind of hope you don't cut them, but it doesn't matter. Don't worry about yeah. what I'm saying, all right? So cut back to Jordan. Five seconds, Jordan. Do you want to cut that packet onto the top? Take your time. This is all about psychological warfare. What do you want to do, Jordan? I'm good. So what I want you to do is this. Take the big packet, the card on top of the big packet, and just have a look at it. I don't know what you card. You motherfucker. Oh, it's the king of diamonds. You could, oh, have cut yes. them. you could have cut them. You could have messed them up. You didn't. You had that choice to do that. You never did. Um, can we have somebody else? Jump somebody else onto a video. Alex. Oh, yeah. Uh, can, can you just? I just want to try to remember the order of your deck. It's not in the moniker, is it? I understand. Oh my God. <laughs> jump, 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 jump me on to Alex. Just go like this one at a time for me, Alex. Just nice and slow from the back, from the back here. All right. So one at a time. No, from this, from this side like this. Oh, you can't see me. That's perfect. Yeah, keep going. I'm just going to try to remember these. That's perfect. Square them up a second. Alex, you're going to get to see me. Uh, so if you pan back to me a second, G. Now, this is not ideal. But in fact, you could put us all on the screen for a second if you want. But look, Alex, I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to show you the backs of the cards. And all I want you to do is just say stop anywhere you want. Stop. 
just there. Yeah. So this is the nine of hearts. Do you know what the nine of hearts is inside your deck? No. Have your hands over the top of the cards like this, Alex. Think of a number from one to fifty-two. Don't tell me where it is. Take the time to think of the number. Okay. Now I know people, Alex, and I know the way people think. You know, in the twenties. I did, yeah. Were it twenty-three or set twenty-seven? Which was it? It was twenty-three. 23, you see, I know people, but it's not at 23, and I can guess a number 10 times out of 10 that anybody's thinking of. Yeah. Hold your hands over the cards and start to feel what number you believe it's at. Take your time to feel it. What number do you believe it's at? 17. If the nine of hearts were at 17, would you flip your shit? Yeah. Don't move the deck. Jump onto Alex for a second. Alex, pan the camera down and deal them face up one at a time to 17. If the nine of hearts is there, this is a fucking miracle. It's okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Let's have a look. Oh. I think that's as fair as fair comes. Thought of card, thought of number dealt down, no switches. Oh, miracle. Um, so, yeah, so there's a, there's a million and one things that you can do over Skype and there's ideas and fun and it's all about being playful. And remember this is is that these sorts of jam sessions are the greatest things. And we were talking with Illusionist recently about opening up sessions like this where we jam backwards and forwards and we perform pieces of mentalism. Um, and, again, I, I'm just jamming, so I don't know the outcome of how things are going to go. I'm just sort of seeing and playing and and moving stuff backwards and forwards in the hopes that it'll happen. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, if any of you want me to do something, is there anything in particular you'd like to see? And I'll have a go at performing it. You know, anything in mind that you've seen. Um, do you want to have a go at, do you want to have a go at doing Isabella Star 3? We can have some fun Ooh. with that. Sure. I'd love to see Isabella Star. Okay, perfect. Um, can you, so this is all I want you to do, Ethan. What I want you to do for me is I want you to pick somebody that's not yourself and if you need to use your phone to do this, Google what their date of birth and star sign is so that you know their star sign and date of birth. Now, bear in mind, everybody that's watching this right now, I'm asking Ethan to jump off, to go onto Google, to find somebody else's date of birth and star sign so nobody in the comments can say that I've somehow looked up Ethan's date of birth because he's picking somebody that he didn't know that he'd be picking. And when you're done, Ethan, give me a clear yes that you have the star sign. So all you have to do is type in, like, say, 26th of October star sign, and it'll tell you what that star sign is. Okay. Thank you, guys. It's just a bit of fun, like I said. I didn't know I'd be performing, but uh, where can we purchase these? We, You know, honestly, the any card, any number stuff, the jazzing stuff. I, I I went to Wales recently, and I was messing around with Wayne, and we filmed the jam session there. I don't know what they're doing with the footage. That's down to them guys. But have you got, have you got one, Ethan? All right, gotcha. So if you could just punch me back into Ethan for a second. Now, Ethan, I'm going to be really honest. The way that I read people is this: first, I've got to learn how people think. Certain people are better at thinking of letters. Other people are better at thinking of, of numbers. Other people are better at creatively thinking of pictures. So we'll start by focusing on the star sign. So just imagine this star sign written in the air between me and you. Just think of the exact amount of letters in this star sign's name. So look at me. Just in your head, start mixing the letters up, and I'll tell you what letters I'm... There's an R in this, right? Mm -hmm. And an A as well, yeah? Yep. There's not an I in there, is there? Yes. Yeah, and an S as well. No. Look, look at me for a second. Just keep saying it over and over like Capricorn, Capricorn. <laughs> There we go. Um, when when you first came onto the stream, I instantly assumed you were going to pick somebody born in December. And I'm glad I didn't rush. It's January, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, this person that you picked, is there one or two digits in the date that this person were born? Uh, in the, the, the year? The day. the day. So, like, for example, right. I was born on the 26th. So, just one. Focus mm -hmm. on whatever that single digit is for me, Ethan. And just imagine it written in the air as a word like eight. So if it was eight, it'd be E I G H T. Yeah, just focus on that one digit written as a word. Go to the very first letter for me. Okay. Are you doing that? Mm -hmm. Can you think of a day of the week that starts with this letter? Yep. 
In fact, make it more impressive. Forget that. Think of the first male name that pops into your head that starts with letter. This is better, a male name. Uh, okay. But not, not unisex. So, you know, Tony, Terry, Sam would be questionable. Sean would be definitive and strong. A name that, that is definitive. And tell me when you've got one. Okay, I got one. Yeah, definitely a guy name. Just imagine this name in its simplest form. So Peter would be Pete, if you can. And think of the exact amount of letters in this name. Yep. This is like three, four letters, four letters long. Four, yeah. Look right at me. Just imagine saying this name. Now, if I could get this, this would be a miracle in itself. Just lean in a little bit closer to the camera. Are you thinking of Fred? <laughs> wow. Wow. Fred. Um, and you could have picked any name. Um, but do you know what the most interesting thing is? Do you know the person's date of birth that you picked? Yeah. Do you know what time that person was born? Uh, I don't, actually. Uh, well, this is interesting because I feel that person was born on the cusp between two days. So you have to check this out. But, that, you know, if you look into it, I guarantee to you this person was born on the 4th or the 5th of January. I believe you think it's the 5th of January, right? The 4th. Yeah. 4th. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> January. But you could check that out and it'd be 100% consistent and congruent to when they were born, you know? Um, so so there you go. So it looks like that. It's cool. It can be done in a minute or so straight over, over Skype. You can tell people the star sign they're thinking of, the date of birth, the name that they just made up, and you can boom, you can guess it out of their heads. And, and like I say, you picked somebody at random and you didn't know you'd be coming onto this stream today to do this. I didn't even know you were doing the stream until I just got a notification on YouTube that you were doing an AMA. So, but yeah, let's go back to the other screen and let's see. Let's see. Let's have a bit more. Fun. Thanks. Thank you, Ethan, for tuning in. I'm going to do one more effect and then, uh, and then we'll bounce out. We'll bounce out. So, let's play. Uh, we've been on for an hour and six minutes. Let's play another game. I'm going to pan down my deck of cards. I'm going to remove the Joker from the deck. Just give me a second. Now, I don't know if this is a complete deck of cards, for which I do apologize. Ooh. But I'm going to try this anyway, and we'll see how it goes. Let's see if I've got the uh, – there it is. And there's this. So if this doesn't work, it doesn't matter, but I think this is a really interesting effect. Can you see these, the playing cards? Yes. You can see yes. Yeah. Yes. So – Somebody else, you know, you nominate yourself. I'm not going to nominate you. Uh, somebody I've not performed on. So, Richie, you'd be great for this because you've just tuned in. Can you see these cards clearly? Uh, yes. So there's one thing that defines a playing card, the identity. Of it. In fact, there's two things. There's the suit and the value. So if you were to look at the value of this card, it would be a five. And if you were to imagine for a second that that number changed to a different number, what number would it change to? Like what would it look like or? No, just what number. If you imagine that five changing to another number, what number would you imagine it changing to? Eight. An eight. And now obviously we have a club. If you imagine, let's say, for example, it changed to a spade, you could see that that had physically changed in shape to a spade. Mm-hmm. Right, so I want you to think of a couple of different suits that you feel it might change to. Give me one of them. Diamond. And now give me the other one. Heart. So all I want you to do is just keep changing between diamond and heart in your head at random. Keep changing, keep changing. Don't say out loud where you're on. Alex, whenever you want Richie to stop, you just say stop. Stop. Okay. Now you, Richie, you know where you stopped, correct? Yes. If you'd have changed just one more time, this would have been different, right? Yes. In fact, if you were to change one more time, where would you be? Diamond. And you could have done that. So that tells us that Alex stopped you on the heart, right? Yes. So you see this changing from the number five to the number eight, and you see the ch the club changing to a heart. I'm going to be really hurt. careful when I do this. Before we started, I took one playing card. I turned it round. And I slotted it back into this deck of cards sat here. And I'm going to be real slow when I do this at fingertips. Watch, there's no funny business. I took one playing card. I don't know if you can see it just here. <laughs> the eight of hearts. If you'd imagine a different value, a different suit, that wouldn't have worked. And this is not an invisible deck. You could check all the cards. Uh, they genuinely are random. Regular let me check this. No. That, was, uh, that was crazy. That was, that was insane. Wow. So. 
There we go. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. But yeah, so so hopefully, um, you know, my intention with these streams is just to help tech people's performances to the next level. Um, Samantha, nice to meet you. Alex, the Alex guy is really hot. Can I have your number? So um, you I'm taken. Oh, he's, he's taken. <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, so, so you could see you could see what this is all about, and you could see that I'm all about helping people take their performances to the next level. And all I'm asking is, look, please just let's stop the the negativity, let's stop the criticism. Um, thank you, Paul. Um, we'll have a look at the stat watch as well. Miss your last session in here. You'll be able to play this back to see what it is that I'm asking for. But please look, if somebody's giving an honest opinion of what they feel a routine is online, let them have it. Let them have that opinion. You're entitled to yours. If you want to tell me what you've just seen, shit, that's fair. That's your opinion. You've watched it. You can criticize it. Was it the best performance and the best outcome of everything? Absolutely not. Was it fun to watch? Was it fun to be a participant and, and to be able to perform it to you guys? Of course. And that's what magic should be. It should be fun. It should be interesting. And we should be inspiring other people to want to get out there and perform. And the amount of people that say to me, I'm nervous going up to people and I'm nervous doing this. Well, of course, these people are nervous because... They're being attacked by their own brothers and sisters, their own brotherhood, their own community. So if they're being attacked by their own community, how do you think they're going to feel when they're having to approach people knowing that those people are going to be more critical than their own peers? You know, we shouldn't be doing that. We shouldn't be disparaging people. We should be helping people. Anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in. We've been on an, an hour and 11 minutes, and I promise you that we'll set up one of these jam sessions. We'll all get online. We'll all jam because I'd love to see your ideas. I'd love to share you. Show your see your routines. Hi, Jordan. Welcome back. But yeah, thank you for having me and on this this discussion. Thank you for watching and, and everything else. And if you want to know how any of that stuff's done, just watch it back a few times, and you'll see, you'll, you'll see the cogs working in my head to try to get it to work the way that I want it to work. And it's all it's all about wiggle room. So yeah, right, guys. Take care and uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you for all of that. That was incredible. Thanks, Amazing. I don't know how it shuts up. Oh, we're all going one at a time.